Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are a, a plant-based fitness nutrition company. So this is a pretty big statement, but I first want to clarify, uh, I am not a medical practitioner. I am not a research scientist. Uh, I am just someone who cares a lot about nutrition and health. Um, and, you know, in my college days, uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, working on my degree for biopsychology, I learned to read studies. And I really enjoyed reading studies because I'm fascinated with by how things work. And the more I learned about human physiology, the more I became fascinated with it. And it's why I do what I do today. Um, because I want to work with the human body to try to improve other people's health and nutrition as well as my own. Um, so the topic is a, a, <laughs> a pretty a big statement and a big claim. Um, so sometimes uh, scientific assumptions that are generally accepted as common play, uh, you know, as accepted as truth, turn out to be wrong. Uh, actually, I was just reading an article today um, that just this year, a new scientific measurement showed that scientists' assumptions about the standard model of particle physics, <laughs> what we base most of physics on, was wrong. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> 50 years we've been assuming that that is the basic truth and since 1960s when it was first conceived up until now we didn't know that that equation was actually wrong some of the uh calculations were just flat out wrong so now they're gonna have to <laughs> kind of reshape the model and rethink particle physics as we know it that model at least based on the new information that we have and and that's what i want to do i want to bring to the conversation new information based on new research that changes the way we think about certain things that we hold to be true or make assumptions about so i'm going to talk about some of those assumptions and why i feel they're not true and then show you the research that backs up at least uh supports the way I think about these things. So what are some of those uh, assumptions? Before I get into that, um, this is a big claim. So some of you are going to ask, well, why am I listening to you? Uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, humans are genetically and physiologically plant-based. Um, I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the research. I want you to listen to these studies. I want you to be critical of these studies. I want you to think about them in your own way, not my way. This is not about me. This is not about my opinion. This is about, I'm going to present you with this data and present it in a way that pieces together and paints a picture. And if you see that picture and it makes sense to you, great. If you don't, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you're seeing differently and let's get this dialogue going because one, this is too important for human health, for our environment, and the 2.7 trillion fish that are killed every year. If we are consuming fish and it actually can be detrimental to our health, we need to know about this. And if there's physiological evidence and even genomic research looking at our actual DNA that shows us why we shouldn't be consuming fish or fish oil, then this is important. This is an important discussion to have because this could change not only you and I, but the entire global approach to our food consumption. Um, some people are going to say, but Jeff, you're biased. You're a 36-year vegan, so you're just out there looking for why, why to support a vegan. 100% correct. Yes, we are all biased. We all have our own biases. What's important here is using that bias to help look for something that other people aren't looking for. This, see that the data out there in the science community and the medical community is accepting some old data 
as truth, as fact. So they stop looking for new information. They're not looking for it. They're not looking for it in the way someone who has a bias would be looking at it differently. So I think it's very important for, for some biases out there because it gets people to search for things that other people aren't even looking for. That's how inventions get made. It's because somebody believes something that can happen when everybody else doesn't believe it. That's when they start looking for a way to make it true or a way to make it happen. Now, I don't want to impose my bias on this. That's why I support everything I'm going to talk about in this, in this video with real research. You can read the research. You can interpret, interpret it your own way and, and find it your own way. But I am going to lay out literally dozens of studies in this video showing you step by step why every single step along this process that it, it is indicating that we should be consuming plants in order to achieve optimal health so let's let's start at the beginning um uh the first thing is uh, obviously i think everybody well most people now accept as a mistruth <laughs> is an untruth a false assumption that omega-3 comes from fish. It does not. Uh, obviously, it does not. Um, the fish cannot make omega-3s. They consume omega-3s from plant-based sources. Actually, plants are the only ones that make essential fatty acids. Um, uh, animals don't. Humans don't. Um, so they need to consume them. Listen, plants are the producers of nutrition. Animals, including humans, are consumers of nutrition. We have to get our nutrition through food. Plants make nutrition. They get it out of the soil. They convert it from the uh, from the air, the soil, the water, and the sunlight. They combine all those things and make the nutrition that our body needs. They make all of the essential fatty acids. They make all of the essential amino acids. They make all of the micronutrients except for B12, uh, which comes from bacteria and doesn't come from animals anyway. Um, and D3 is technically not a, a micronutrient at all. It's not a vitamin. It's a hormone. And it's made by sunlight hitting our body. Now, we can take it as a supplement, and it can come from plant sources. Uh, we'll talk about that in a different video. But yes, yeah, so that is totally not true. False. Omega-3 comes from fish. It does not. Yes, you can get omega-3 by consuming fish, but that's not where it originates. It's not where it's made, not where it comes from. Uh, okay, number two, a false assumption. Humans only need EPA and DHA. Okay, this is not true. This is false. Our body, now we understand that our body actually needs all of these. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. So we need alpha linolenic acid, excuse me, ALA, uh, ceridonic acid, SDA, ETA, then EPA, and DPA, and then finally DHA. So these are the, all the six uh, omega-3s that our body uses in, in its uh, omega-3 forms, precursors, and transitions. So why is that uh, saying that uh, we don't need just EPA and DHA? Uh, let's take a look at this study. I'll put it up on the screen for you and grab it. <clears throat> um, there was a study that uh, showed, oh, on the comment section so that everybody can read it. It's kind of long, so maybe I should break it into two. Okay, first I'll put up the quote from the study in the comment section if you're watching this live. If not, um, I will post it later in the YouTube. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring it up on the screen. Um, so this is a study that was uh, called Determinants of Fluid Intelligence and Healthy Aging, Omega-3 Polyunsaturated Fatty Acids and the Frontal Parietal Cortex Structure. Okay, so what it's saying is basically that ETA, the, the first three omega-3s, now I'm going to actually put that up on the screen once again so you can see them. The first three omega-3s in the blue box there, that is alpha linoleic acid or ALA, SDA, and ETA. So they looked at um, the uh, a high, those with the highest amounts of uh, those three fatty acids and found they had greater fluid intelligence and greater total gray brain matter. That's right. That's a preservation 
of gray brain matter. So what is that saying? Well, that is saying that um, our body actually needs these first three forms of omega-3 fatty acids to preserve our brain, to protect our brain from deterioration, from aging, uh, from, from losing intelligence. So very important to have these three precursor fatty acids. Um, so can't we get those from animal products? No, it is impossible. When you so let me put up on the screen once again, this conversion chart. So what's really important to uh, understand about this conversion chart, let me get over here so you can see me. <laughs> okay, is this very first one at the top, alpha uh, ALA converts down to SDA, which converts down to ETA, then EPA, then DPA. And at the very bottom, the last conversion is DHA. Now, scientists recently figured out this is a unidirectional, means it only goes one way. That means that that DHA down here at the bottom, DHA cannot convert to any of the other five forms. That means if you're consuming DHA in a preformed supplement from fish oil or algae oil, you cannot, your body cannot make any of the other five omega-3 fatty acids that it needs. So what this is saying is this unidirectional flow means it is best to start at the top because alpha, alpha, the ALA can convert down to all of the rest of the omega-3 fatty acids. So that makes infinitely more sense than starting at the bottom when not all you get is DHA. Okay, all right, so let's go on to the next one. So. Now that we understand that there is a unidirectional flow of this and that it's best to start with the top, and the top one is ALA and SDA, those are the top two, they only are found in plants. So this is telling us that we have this amazing, elaborate, built-in system. We're born with it. Every human being on this planet is born with this exact system with enzymes to convert every single stage of those six things. This comes with a package. You're born with this package. And the, the, to start at the top only can happen when you consume plant sources of omega-3s. You cannot get the benefits of taking a plant uh, animal-based that you get when you take plant-based. So this is telling us our body is pre-configured to consume plant-based omega-3s, not fish oil. Hey, we need EPA and DHA. If you are starving out in the wild and it's the only thing you can eat, is it helpful? Sure, because you don't want to run too low on EPA or DHA. Is that where human beings are at now? No, it's not. We're not starving. We're not in complete survival mode. So this is what we're showing is that our body is system, it's pathway. Now, why is it unidirectional and why is DHA at the very bottom? This is another clue. This tells us that our body, all right, so let's back up a little bit. Enzymes, these are really important. How are enzymes controlled? Because remember, you've got all six of these stages. Each one of those little green arrows is an enzyme doing the conversion, either a elongase or desaturase. These are types of enzymes. And, and why are enzymes so important? Enzymes are catalysts to almost every function in our body, right? Our body uses enzymes for this function. Yes, that is your DHA being converted to testosterone, which can then be converted to estrogen or DHT or lots of other cool things. So that same process is happening, systems all over our body, all kinds of systems for hormones and thyroid and, and, and omega-3s. These systems all require enzymes. As a matter of fact, out of the 20 to 25,000 genes in our DNA, Almost 25% of all of those genes have one purpose, enzymes. That's how important enzymes are. And why are enzymes so important? Because they control what gets changed to what. That's why it's so important. It is the body's self 
regulating system. If you are getting too much of one, it can convert it down to another one. If you're getting not enough of this one down here, it can convert it. So these enzymes are fed by epigenetics, epi meaning over, genetics obviously being genes. These are the factors that control our genes. So it goes epigenetic feedback. What is the information going on in the body? Is there an injury? Okay, we need to convert more pro-inflammatory uh, omega-6s to arachidonic acid. And for omega-3s, you want that conversion to go down. Now, why is DHA at the bottom? Because DHA can actually be problematic if you get too much of it. What happens when the body sees it gets too much DHA? And this is why I don't supplement DHA at all. I have never taken a, a algae-based or fish oil-based uh, EPA or DHA supplement in my entire life. I've been vegan for 36 years. I believe there is no reason whatsoever. And not only that, taking a preformed DHA made outside of the body can disrupt and, and cause harm and damage to the body. What happens is when you consume DHA from the outside of the body, already pre-made, it's called preformed DHA, like from fish or algae. I know a lot of vegans out there are taking algae supplements and I, I personally would never do that because of this. So when you introduce that, the body says, whoa, that's too much DHA. It shuts down the enzymes. So the epigenetic feedback goes over to the genes, turns off the genes that produce the enzyme, and then the enzymes are not there to do the conversion. So what it does is it stops the conversion right here at the EPA level, right here, okay? So there's too much DHA down here. The body will stop the enzyme that's in between that converts EPA to DPA and then DHA. It cuts off those enzymes says, whoa, we've got too much DHA down here. And then what happens, it, it piles up an EPA. Okay, that's not good. Studies have shown both in human and animals, when you have EPA starting to pile up, it's basically backing up because it says, whoa, let's cut off the DHA down here. And then, uh-oh, all this EPA starts to pile up because it stopped the conversion. Um, then this EPA actually can cause uh, stunted memory and learning processes, disrupting brain function. This is the acute levels of EPA, and this is known. You can look it up on the research out there. There's plenty of research on it uh, showing uh, uh, acute EPA levels actually lower the brain function. So you're taking DHA to actually improve brain function when it can cause a pileup of EPA and actually damage or in inhibit brain function. And not only that, the DHA is not giving you the top three omega-3 fatty acids, that in the blue box up there, which only come from plants, which have shown to increase the body's ability to mentally process, increase our fluid intelligence, increase protection of our brain matter. Not even available when you take DHA or EPA or any of the animal-based stops. Okay. So let's look at this system. <laughs> this is what's so important here. Our body genetically designed this system with nice little stop gaps, control of our enzymes through epigenetics and genes that say, wait a minute, if we ever get too much of one, we can cut off the enzymes and we can control and regulate this whole flow of which ones of these we need. And here we come along, doo, 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 doo. I'll just drop some DA, DHA in there. Well, boom, our body doesn't have a method for controlling that now. You have just dropped something in the body that the body didn't create itself. And it says, well, I, I didn't make that. And then it has to do, try to scramble to try to rebalance the system. So by taking this preformed EPA or DHA, you are disrupting a natural conversion process that is pre-regulated by enzymes by DNA, by epigenetics, all of these beautiful systems that regulate the balance and flow. Oh, we need a little bit more of the EPA over here. We need a little bit more DHA in this tissue. We need a little bit more of ETA and ALA over here. Okay, great. And then the body is constantly altering all these enzymes through epigenetics and gene, gene adaptations to control this flow. 
And then you just go and drop some EPA and DPA, DHA in his preform state. And then the body says, well, I didn't make that. I can't control that. There is no regulation available for that. When the body has it inside and it's making its own from precursors that only come from plants, ALA, SDA only come from plants. These are the precursors. Now, one of the big takeaways, you know, one of the big knocks on the plant-based omega-3s is, oh, ALA doesn't convert to DHA. I, I'm sure you probably all heard that, right? Oh, you can't take ALA. It doesn't convert to DHA at all. Wrong. False. Here's why. First, they were looking for DHA conversion in the bloodstream, and that's not where it happens. Okay. Why on earth would the body take ALA from the very top, which again, remember, it's a perfect precursor. It can convert to any one of these omega-3s. Why would it take it and down convert it all the way to DHA and then it's stuck with it? Remember, there is no retro conversion. DHA cannot, cannot, it is impossible, convert back to any one of the rest of the five omega-3s. Why on earth would our body take something that is perfectly in its precursor state and can become any one of those omega-3s? Why would it take it and drop it all the way down to the bottom one where it can't convert into anything? That would be stupid. Our body would not do that. That's dumb. <laughs> that means you've converted all your dollar bills down into pennies. And now you can't do anything but use pennies for something that takes pennies. That's stupid. You wouldn't do that with your dollars. You don't do that with your omega-3s either. So why would the body keep ALA in that? Because it's perfect, because it can go to one tissue that needs, I need a balance of high EPA and low DHA. Great. Then it can convert it right inside the tissues. So the only way we would know ALA is converting to DHA is through biopsies, actually taking tissues little chunks of the tissues themselves and looking at the conversion that's happening. In it. This is called metabolism or biosynthesis, not, gen not uh, uh, enzymatic conversion in the bloodstream. So one is circulating uh, DHA, which is how much DHA is actually in the bloodstream. And then there's two, there's metabolized DHA. That is actually what has been converted inside the tissues. Now, the heart needs more EPA, the brain needs more ALA, SDA, ETA, and some DHA. So there are different ratios for each one of the organs, each one of our tissues. Muscle needs more EPA than DHA. So why would your body pre-convert ALA all the way down to DHA, get it to the muscle and go, oh shit, I need more EPA. Tough luck, I've already pre-converted it to DHA. That would be dumb. Our body is not dumb. Our body is much more intelligent than many of the researchers who are making these assumptions. Okay, so this idea that plant-based ALA omega-3 does not convert to DHA is false because we've just been looking, looking in the wrong place. We've been looking in the blood, doing blood draws and saying, oh, there's no ALA, still ALA, or it converts to SDA and the EPA, okay, but not all the way down to DHA. Of course, it wouldn't do that. The body is not going to make that mistake and convert it down to something that it can't convert it back to. Um, okay, let's keep going. Um, uh, what other false assumptions? Um, okay, that plant-based omega-3 converts poorly to EPA. And that is wrong too. And it's obvious for the exa exact same reason is because the body is taking these omega-3s in their perfect precursor forms that it can cash in on any type of omega-3 and then waiting till it gets inside each specific tissue for each specific reason. Remember, you could work out when you work out, you increase your need for EPA in the muscle tissue. So you would take the ALA in its precursor state and then do the conversion there to, uh, EP to a higher ratio of EPA to DHA. So it, is it a problem when we introduce an outside source, a preformed source of EPA and DHA? So I'm going to give you an analogy here because I think, you know, some some people I've talked to about this kind of get lost in all the science, like, oh, okay, I don't, not really following you. I think most people understand that when you take steroids, right, 
testosterone made outside of the body and you introduce it to the human body, the body shuts down its own production of testosterone. Now, if you keep taking that outside source of testosterone and converting it, the body says, well, I don't need to make my own and can actually permanently shut down its production of uh, its own natural testosterone. Well, that's basically what you're doing. And I'm going to put this back up on the chart because this is the chart of conversion, much very similar to the conversions through enzymes that you just saw with omega-3s. So when you start out, uh, let me see if I can show my hand here. If you start out down here with DHA, that is the precursor, right? And, and, and then our body actually can convert it in and go all the way up the chain to free testosterone up here. But if you jump in up here, up on the top with free testosterone made outside of the human body, the whole system collapses. You start getting over conversion of testosterone to estrogen and DHT. This is caused gyno. You see guys with uh, using steroids, they get breast growth. That's because you've started way up here upstream in the whole process and you've inserted testosterone at the top and then the body is trying to produce its own testosterone goes whoa wait a minute there's too much testosterone up there let's take our testosterone and convert it to estrogen or convert it to dht that's why the the body the steroid using bodybuilders get bald hair because that dht just wipes out their hair they get back acne really bad because that's dht trying to scoot out the skin and stimulate the skin um, the, the extra facial hair growth and back hair growth. That's DHT again. This is a, these are side effects for when you jump ahead upstream. Well, that's exactly what you're doing with DHA. When you're taking DHA, you're jumping ahead in the stream. You're jumping all the way down here to the bottom and, and then causing a backup and, of all the rest of those and a dysfunction of all the rest of those uh, as well too. So that's exactly what we don't want to happen. We don't want to introduce these, these forms that are pre-made outside of our body. We want to give our body the precursors that come from plants. We have a whole system already set up in our body. Everybody is born with it. We are genetically designed to consume plants and go down this proper uh, change of events so that the body can regulate each step to the perfect amount of each one of those six omega-3s so that your body gets what it needs, when it needs it, to the right tissues, for the right gender. Men need different ratios than women do. So all these supplements out there that are doing EPA and DHA, like algae supplements and, and uh, fish supplements, they don't know the right ratios. I'm, I'm gonna show you something that this, this study even talks about. <laughs> Speaking of ratios, why ratios are important. So I'm gonna put this up on, uh, let's see, let me do this a little bit at, at a time. Uh, okay, this is the study. And I'm gonna put this on the screen so everyone can see it. So this study was saying, okay, these ratios are important, the ratio of EPA to DHA. So this study says the ratio of EPA to DHA as a modulator of cardiometabolic effects on omega-3 supplements. So that's what this study was doing is saying, well, what is the correct ratio of EPA to DHA? Well, what they found was uh, that a higher EPA level was good for some things and a higher DHA level was good for other things. So they were going, well, then both are good and both are bad? How is that possible? Well, it's because the body has a self-regulating mechanism already built into it. This is why preformed EPA and DHA won't work because you don't know what the right ratio is for them. So a higher EPA ratio was good for diabetes, but a higher DHA ratio was better for, um, for uh, hypertension. So what if you have hypertension and diabetes? Well, let your body figure it out. Let your body take these precursor forms, take it to the tissue and convert it in the right ratio 
for that tissue, for that disease state, for that gender, for that current need, then let your body make all those decisions. To think that you can actually take a preformed EPA and DHA, make sure that it's in the right amount for each tissue, you would actually have to take a biopsy of every type of brain tissue, heart tissue, and, and all these different tissues, then look at each tissue's needs, and then develop a ratio, and then inject that ratio directly into that tissue in order to make that happen. Do you see how silly these preformed supplements are? Our body has this all figured out. Our body has systems in place driven by epigenetics, genes, and enzymes to control the levels of every single one of those six omega-3s in perfect harmony for each tissue, for each gender, for each genotype. Here's an amazing study that takes it even further. It shows our genes are hard-coded to actually be consumers of plant-based omega-3. And that they even showed by studying the Inuits that those who were eating fish, Inuits are uh, up in Alaska and Greenland, we Americans call them Eskimos, but they're Inuit tribes. Um, but because of the extreme cold, and because all they had to eat, there were no plants available because of the extreme cold, all they had to eat mostly were, were fish, their body adapted and they added an allele, a, a genetic a adaptation to allow them to move that fatty acid to the outside of their body to warm them, to keep them warm. So it, it functioned as that and it stored it as building blocks rather than using it as, as different things and to keep it away from internal organ fat, which is called trunk fat, that, uh, that fat that actually sits on your heart, your liver, where we get non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome, all of these health issues, it's, it actually had to adapt, but it adapted from a base of genes that are built for this system. So this is telling us that genetics are there, that we are genetically pre-designed and have a system in place to convert plants all the way down. I was just reading this, this other uh, new study, which is great, and I'll throw it up on the board real quick. Um, uh, so this, this is the article which I'm referring to. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the board right now. And then I am going to show you what it <laughs> conclusion it comes to because it leads into omega sixes. So I'm going to throw this up here. So this is the article link. Uh, are we what we eat? Evidence of a vegetarian diet permanently shaping human genome to change individual risks for heart disease and cancer. So vegans rely almost exclusively on endogenous, that's inside our body, synthesis, biosynthesis, not just enzymes in the blood, right? This is actually biosynthesis, turning these into the right forms of omega-3s in the tissues to generate long chain uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, LC-PUFA. And we hypothesized that an adaptive genetic polymorphism would confer an advantage. So this is saying that because our system is set up the way it is, our genes programmed us to have this advantage of doing this very well. And this study is consistent with previous in vitro data suggesting that the, this adaptation enhances also omega-6 fatty acid synthesis and may and confer uh, advantages there too. So let's jump to omega-6 fatty acids because this has been a big knock on plant-based omega-3s. You know, oh, plants are too high in omega-6s and this is a bad thing. Okay, first let's address omega-6s are bad. And that is completely wrong. Omega-6 is an essential fatty acid, meaning it's essential for life. <laughs> So it can't be essential for life and bad at the same time. Now, too much of anything is, it can be a bad thing, but as, uh, omega-6 fatty acids are necessary 
a particular omega-6 fatty acid called uh, linoleic acid or LA. LA converts to arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid is pro-inflammatory. Now, most people think the word pro-inflammatory and go, oh, bad, no pro, I don't want inflammation. No, we can't survive without inflammation. Inflammation keeps diseases off of us like uh, parasites, bacteria, uh, uh, things like this. Uh, arachidonic acid, one of the highest places arachidonic acid is stored on the human body is in your muscle tissue. When you uh, have arachidonic acid in the muscle tissue, the muscle squeezes and actually when you contract the muscle, when you're working out, you're actually releasing arachidonic acid into your system. So arachidonic acid is pro-inflammatory, meaning, hey, there's some injury going on here or there's some stress going on here. Same what a workout is, right? A, a workout is you stressing that muscle arachidonic acid released and then the body is signaled to come over and hey let's build and repair and build muscle and strengthen this muscle so arachidonic acid which comes from plant-based omega-3 al uh, la this is necessary for actually building muscle it plays a role in building muscle you cannot build it without it so this is a very important piece when people say when i hear people say oh i don't want any omega-6 in my diet i'm like are you kidding you you would die you we have to have uh, proper inflammation in our body what you don't want is chronic inflammation that's inflammation that happens way above and beyond a healthy inflammatory response that's where it becomes a problem. But interestingly, scientists assume, oh, well, wait a minute, plants are high in LA, which then converts to arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory. So plants are pro-inflammatory. Bad. Wrong. Here's the study. I'm going to put it up there for you. Um, now let me find it in my notes. Give me just one moment. Because this is really a breakthrough change in, in our understanding of it. Um, I'm going to go into DGLA, but first I want to start with arachidonic acid. Here it is. Okay. All right. So plant-based omegas and their conversion. This changes that conversation completely. So remember, plants make, uh, oh, plants make uh, LA or high in omega-6, right? You always say get a better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio because LA converts to arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory, so that's bad. So plant-based omega-3s, arachidonic acid, bad. Okay, I'm going to show you why that's not true. All right, so this is it up on the screen. So plant-based LA, uh, linoleic acid, can convert to arachidonic acid, but it is regulated by epigenetic genes and enzymes. Now, this is direct quote from the study. For instance, a reduction of LA, that plant-based uh, uh, omega-6, LA, when you reduced it by half over four weeks, there was no change in arachidonic acid levels in the bloodstream. What? Actually, if you look at it, it says 9.7 to 9.9. .9, so it actually went up slightly. So when you reduce the plant source of arachidonic acid, which is LA, the omega-6, right? That bad, nasty, uh, pro-inflammatory omega-6. When you reduced it by half, the arachidonic acid levels didn't change at all. <laughs> and here's why. Because our body has a system to regulate that in place. It can use another omega-6 called GLA. Well, technically it's called DGLA, but most people know it as GLA. GLA is found in some plants like um, uh, ahi flower is, is a great source of uh, GLA. GLA is an omega-6 that is actually anti-inflammatory. <laughs> so this is interesting because then the body can actually use 
the GLA or DGLA to reduce the arachidonic acid. So the body has a mechanism to control the amount of arachidonic acid. Now our body, it's vital for us to have arachidonic acid for proper inflammatory response, but it's also vital for us to have a balance of anti-inflammatory. That balance is key. Um, but here's the interesting part of this study. Oh gosh, let me get, oh, okay. All right, here it is. This is the bomb drop. Yeah, put it up on the screen here. So dietary preformed, there's that word again, preformed, meaning made outside of the body, arachidonic acid. So where do we get preformed arachidonic acid? Right, it's made by animals just like our body takes ALA, a, LA and converts it to arachidonic acid, so do animals. So when you eat an animal product with that arachidonic acid already in there, that actually causes inflammation. Why is that? <laughs> because the body has regulatory system. It can control how much LA gets converted to arachidonic acid by enzymes and epigenetics, remember? Just like ALA to DHA. The body controls this through genes and enzymes and epigenetic feedback. If you have a whole bunch of, uh, of LA, it doesn't matter. The body will never overconvert arachidonic acid from no matter how much AL, uh, LA the body has in the system. That's plant-based omega-6. Now, when you take, when it's already turned into arachidonic acid in another animal, and then you take that and put it in your body, our body has no control over that. It's not making that arachidonic acid. You are eating it and consuming it. So this is when the body gets too much arachidonic acid. So our body has a mechanism to take all this LA swimming around our body. That's why it's abundant in plants because we need it. But it's in a precursor form. The body won't convert it. It only converts it up to its level that it needs and then just stops converting LA to additional arachidonic acid. So this assumption that plant-based, because it's high in LA, is gonna be pro-inflammatory is false. There is a mechanism that the body says, no, I'll just cut off the enzymes that, that turn LA into arachidonic acid, so it won't. It has a cap on it. But when you consume outside preformed arachidonic acid, this comes in right on top and the body has no way to control it. It's already in the arachidonic acid form. And then you keep consuming animals and this, this is where the inflammation comes from. This is where you get chronic inflammation. This is why animal products cause the disease states we do because we are building this arachidonic acid preformed, remember, just like steroids, this preformed source from another animal made outside of our body, piled in on top, and our body has no control over that. It didn't make it. It can't stop making it. You are telling it what it's what it uh, what level of arachidonic acid by what you eat. When you eat animal products, you're consuming arachidonic acid. And the animal is stressed, which is most of the animals that are killed for food these days in factory farming. It's arachidonic acid. It's stressful. It's, it's kicked through the roof, right? Because it's in a pro-inflammatory state. And then we're eating this pro-inflammatory ridden high arachidonic acid in the meats and the flesh of the animal. And we're piling all that arachidonic acid causing chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation leads to arthritis, leads to diabetes, leads to uh, heart disease, coronary heart disease, cardiovascular heart disease, cancers. Pro-inflammatory states are where cancers can bloom and blossom. All of these major disease states, all of the major killers are by our bodies from eating this arachidonic acid that we're getting, causing pro-inflammation. Those pro-inflammatory, chronic pro-inflammatory states 
causing this is and it's not plants our body has a mechanism to shut off arachidonic acid production from la it just stops producing the enzyme that converts it but we're overriding the body's systems every time we consume an animal product we're overriding it by putting preformed dha in we're overriding it by putting pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid in we're overriding it when we put EPA in from fish oil or from algae. Don't override this system. Give it its precursors and let the body make the decision on what it needs, when it needs it, where it needs it, and for whom each person, each individual is going to have separate, distinct needs of all of the different omega-3s, all of the nine different omega-6 forms, not just arachidonic acid. Look, I'm gonna put this up here on GLA because GLA is an omega-6 fatty acid found in plants, by the way, too, as well. Um, remember, plants don't have ALA, don't have SDA. I mean, animal products don't have ALA, don't have SDA, can't make ETA. They don't provide GLA. These are things found in plants. and and all of this regulation, not only regulated by enzymes, but they're also regulated by polyphenols. Where did that come from? Only plants. Are you getting this? <laughs> Our genes are set up to designed to make these plant precursors work for us, to allow our body to regulate and control all of these omega-3s. Let me put this up here for um, the... Uh, plants make, uh, an, uh, like ahi flower, ahi flower is very high in naturally occurring uh, GLA. Uh, GLA is not only anti-inflammatory, but I want to show you this study. And I'll put it up on the screen too. And um, look, if, if you guys ever hear about any, any, me talking about any particular studies that I didn't get up, I'll provide all the links um, or you can just tag, you know, write uh, the comment in the section, hey, I wanted to learn more about the study. You can always go back and look at this study on cleanmachineonline.com. Uh, you can pause it, you can share it, you can do screen captures, whatever. Um, but let me get this up here um, because this is a really important piece too as well. Um, so this uh, literature showing a preferential uh, DGLA accrual from combined plant-based GLA and omega-3 sources inhibits arachidonic acid formation. So this is one of the ways that our body uses other plant omega-6s to actually regulate arachidonic acid production. So yes, plants have high a, uh, LA, which can form arachidonic acid, but plants also provide the GLA, which can help regulate that production. So this is how our body controls it. Not only the enzymes, but other plant sources of nutrients help the body in its regulatory process. And they found that among all of the omega-6 fatty acids, higher levels of GLA correlated, and I'm reading straight off this study directly in front of you, correlated, right, most strongly with lowered risk for cardiovascular disease and all causes of death. <laughs> you read that right. The higher the plant sources of good essential fatty acids in their omega-6 states like DGLA actually reduced all causes of death that they, they looked at in this current study. I mean, this is exciting stuff, but all of this comes from plants and only plants. Our whole body system is set up for plants right down to our DNA, right down to our genetics, right down to our epigenetics, right inside to our enzymes. 25% of all of our genes are dedicated to these enzymes because they control our systems. They control not only our systems for, for uh, obviously for omega-3s, but also for our hormone regulation, thyroid hormone regulation. So let's talk about that for a second. So I told you that when you take a thyroid medicine, a preformed uh, T3 or T4, these are thyroid hormones. When you take that, they warn you. Once you start taking that, you can permanently shut down your own body's production of thyroid hormones. 
that is taking an outside source, you're disrupting the natural flow conversion and processing and biosynthesis that your body has already in place and it's telling it to shut up and shut down. That's the horrible thing we're doing to our bodies by taking some of these drugs. Steroids do the same thing. They can permanently shut down these systems. Now, interestingly, when the uh, Inuit people, right, when they changed their genetics, actually, to help them adapt and survive the harsh conditions by consuming fish, that system didn't change and it didn't shut down. That's telling me that that is the core base genetic and, and, and biochemical pathway that is going to maintain there. Remember, when you introduce preformed testosterone or preformed um, thyroid hormones, you can permanently shut down your own body's system there. But with omega 3s, when you introduce uh, EPA or DHA in preformed states, our body still keeps that system in place, still keeps those enzymes in place. As a matter of fact, when you reduce the DHA from the outside source, the body turns on those enzymes, kicks up those enzymes. I'll even put that on the board for you too, because that's shown in a study and directly quoted by the researchers themselves. Okay. And I'll put the link up there too, so you can uh, read it. Okay, so what happens when you actually reduce the amount of preformed DHA and EPA if you're taking algae or fish oil? Let's see if I can get this. Not putting it up there. Okay. All right, now I got it up there. So what happens when you actually remove the fish oil? So this study, it was called the Epic Norfolk study. It showed that those who did not eat fish, remember not getting preformed sources, actually had higher rates of conversion. That's because when the, the DHA was not present, right? When DHA is not being introduced to the body, when that goes away, when you stop eating fish, the body says, okay, let's turn on those enzymes. And it starts producing even more enzymes that convert all the things to DHA. So the best conversion rates of ALA to DHA were actually in vegans. They had the highest DHA because we have the highest conversion rates. Now, if you can consume fish, and increase your DHA levels to here. But when you stop eating fish, your body gets so much more efficient at converting, it actually has a higher level of DHA than when you consume fish. Why on earth would you take fish? You're actually ending up with potentially less of the uh, omega-3s in their proper forms that your body needs. When you don't consume the animal products, when you remove them from your diet, your system turns back on and starts functioning fully just as it was designed to do. All of the enzymes shooting out, doing all the conversion, and it starts becoming conversion. That was why the researchers in the beginning, when they looked at the standard American diet, they said, oh, ALA is not converting very well to, to EPA or DHA. Well, they were looking at those on a standard American diet who are getting all this exogenous, this outside source from animals in their diet. It wasn't until this Epic Norfolk study when they actually looked at vegans too, who had no, and they found their enzyme levels were much higher than those who were consuming fish. Why? Because if you're getting a preformed source, your body doesn't need to convert from, from the plant sources. It's already there in your system. So by consuming outside sources, you are telling the body not to convert. Well, that's what the scientists studied, but they just assumed, oh, that means that human beings all don't convert well. Eh, wrong. <laughs> it's, it's what they're eating. What you're eating changes the way your body behaves. It's not going to overconvert. Look, if you're putting in a bunch of DHA, it's not going to convert a bunch of more DHA. It doesn't need it. 
So it's only when that source of exogenous DHA goes away that your body actually comes on and starts producing and converting through biosynthesis and enzyme production all of the DHA that it needs. But it also regulates them. Remember, when you consume these fish oils from outside the body, your body cannot regulate that. It is already made. It can't stop it from being made. You've just put it in your body. This is the system. It's the same allopathic madness that's been going on. We see in allopathic medicine, oh, this chemical comes out, but it's a chemical in a chain of chemicals that works very in a very intricate system. Our body is systemic. It works in systems level. It doesn't work. You just can't poke one thing and shoot it off. What do you hear every time you hear a drug coming on, a drug commercial coming on? About half or more of the ad is spent on the side effects that that drug causes. Why? Because when you've got a system and you just poke at one thing, all the rest of the things are going to go out of whack. Well, that's exactly what we're doing when we're dropping in DHA or EPA in its preformed state. You're messing up the whole system. Our body has a regulatory system that governs exactly how much of each specific omega form, each a specific omega-6 form. It is constantly regulating and, and controlling this flow of omega-3s and omega-6s. All we have to do is supply it with the original plant-based omega-3s in their precursor forms and the body in its own inherent intelligence with all of the wisdom, all of the biofeedback mechanisms in the body will tell it exactly what to turn those things into, when to turn it into, for whom it needs to turn it into, for what disease it needs to turn it into. That's the intelligence of the human body. And if we just give it what it needs, its precursors, and let the body determine when and where to make those changes, we will get the optimal health that we are looking for. I know this was a long video, it's an hour long, but God is so important and it really radically changes these basic assumptions that plants don't provide the right omega-3s, they do. They actually provide the preferred state for our human body in omega-3s that uh, we're not genetically designed, we're genetically designed to eat animals. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Let me leave you just one other thing here. Um, uh, that this this amazing um, this beautiful chain of, of events, right? All this nice thing that is built into every single living human being has this system of conversion. Guess what? Carnivores don't have it. That's why humans are not carnivores, because carnivores had adapted a system of just getting what they need from EPA and DHA from eating other animals. We are not carnivores. This system is made for plants. It's in every human being. Using it works. <laughs> it's why our body made it. There's a principle called the conservation of en energy principle. Our body runs on efficiency. 200,000 years of development and evolution, our body tries to find the cheapest way to run this body by conserving energy. Why would it make this entire system if those top three weren't even needed to be used, only the EPA and the DHA down below? Why would it create that system of enzymes? Why would it uh, expend all that energy, all those resources? Enzymes are proteins. So, you know, 25% of our DNA is made specifically just to develop enzymes? That's an awful lot of protein use. You think protein is just about muscle tissue? No, <laughs> my God, protein runs is what an enzyme is made of. It's made of proteins and they control almost every single physiological function in our body. Let our body decide which enzymes can control and, and, and upregulate or downregulate our system. Let's stop pretending that we know better than our body by dumping in these preformed sources that just wreck the whole system, throw it out of balance, and cause unwanted negative health effects. And for God's sakes, it's if I haven't made it abundantly clear now <laughs> that the human genome, our epigenetics, our enzymes, and our actual hard drive 
physiology is built to consume plants, then I've failed in this conversation. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I put a lot into it. I've been doing this research for years now, and I feel, finally feel like I have the data that overwhelmingly shows a clear picture that human beings are made to consume plants, that plants are the preferable source of a, both omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids, that omega-6 is regulated by our system, so we need to stop fearing omega-6s in our body. Now, if the body is, is being forced into a pro-inflammatory state by unhealthy conditions, yes, it's going to make more inflammation. And if it has lots of LA, the plant-based omega-6 on it, of course, it's going to convert it to arachidonic acid. But that's not the cause of the problem. The body is doing the right thing by creating that inflammatory state. It's The problem is we're doing unhealthy practices that cause that, initiate that inflammatory state. Our body is just responding the right way to it. Once we are in a healthy body, the body prevents from, from creating an overly inflammatory state. It has the mechanisms already in place. It's not the plant-based uh, omega-6 that is the problem. It's not. It's regulated by our bodies. It's the animal-based preformed arachidonic acid that causes all this inflammation that leads to inflammatory disease states, which is just about almost all the major disease states that are killing human beings today. This is why this is so important. We need to change this conversation that plants are not bad. They're actually far superior, that they actually promote health, that they actually allow the body to stay in its mechanisms, its hard built physiology to keep itself well regulated so that the body doesn't go out of balance. Plants work with the body. These animal products, just like humans, right? An animal is its own, we're an animal, and it does its conversions too. But when you pre-convert them, you are, and then introduce them to our body, you are skipping our internal systems. You're going in and just wrecking the system. That's not what our body was designed to do, is designed to eat plants in their precursor states. I hope this gets out. If you have people who are experts in this field, uh, doctors, scientists, uh, people who are students, please share this with them. I want this conversation to get out there. If I'm wrong about any of this stuff, let's talk about it. If I'm right about any of this stuff, let's talk about it because this could mean a huge difference, not only in human health, but our impact and our choices are making on the oceans. If you haven't seen Sea Spiracy, right, please take the time to watch it. Then you'll understand why I'm so passionate about this particular subject. Because right now, fish oil and fish oil production and fish consuming is wiping out our oceans. Not only that, it's wiping out the phytoplankton. The phytoplankton produce about 70% of the oxygen you and I are breathing right now. When we wipe out that phytoplankton, we can wipe out most of the animal life on, on this planet. That's how close we are to causing not just an extinguishing of life in the ocean, but extinguishing life on this planet completely. That's why this is so important. We have to change our nutritional understanding about health, about consuming plants and getting these plants into us and changing away from fish oil, from algae oil, and these preformed states that are in animals and get back to the health that our body deserves, but also its impact on our environment, its impact on 2.7 trillion fish that are killed unnecessarily, that are doing not only harm to the ocean, but harm to our own bodies. This is just wrong and it needs to change. And I need your help to get this information in front of people who can voice it. I don't care if it comes from me, that's ego, that's, that's bull crap. That's not why I'm here on this planet. I'm here to help make positive change, both in your health, in the environment's health, the animal's health. And, and I hope, I hope this message gets out there. This message is so much bigger than I am. It's so much bigger than, than anything I've ever done. That's why I'm trying to gather all this information, present it in a way that hopefully makes sense to you and if not, get it in front of some other people that, that might be uh, experts in the field. And let's get this conversation and let's change this dialogue so that we can change the habits of humans that are destroying this planet. Well, 
I, I own this uh, company and I, uh, to, to bring some plants, specific plants that are important. And you heard me talk about uh, uh, alpha linoleic acid or ALA, SDA, steridonic acid, GLA, and LA for healthy arachidonic acid. Those are four amazing parts of omega-3 and omega-6 that our body needs, essential fatty acids. I wanna throw this chart up on here to show you why I chose ahi flower. I don't know if you can see it, it looks a little small to me, but um, this is why I selected ahi flower as our product of choice. If you look, ALA, right, 39, Flax seeds way up there at 49, which is great, but flaxseed has no SDA, steridonic acid. SDA, ahi flower is the highest in SDA, shows the highest conversion rates to EPA, which is a balancing. EPA actually balances our, our total omega-3 profile. Um, also, look at the uh, LA, which is the pro-inflammatory, but what our body needs to convert to arachidonic acid. But we also need the GLA, which is the anti-inflammatory version to LA, which is pro-inflammatory, so that we have a healthy balance there. And as you can see, flax, chia, sacha enchi, none of them have uh, SDA or GLA, right? So this is why it's so much better than flax, chia, hemp, all of them. You can see hemp does actually have a little bit of SDA, so that's good. But unfortunately, it's very low in ALA in comparison. You can see the first column there for hemp, and it's really high in omega-6 uh, fatty acid. You can see the 49 there, which is uh, four to five times higher than flax chia or ahi flour of LA, which is pro-inflammatory. So you don't want that high of balance. It does have a little GLA, which will help. So hemp's okay, but still not as good. And that's why I chose ahi flower. The highest in ALA, SDA, a proper form of LA and good source of GLA as well. It is the most balanced, most complete omega-369 I have ever seen. Uh, multiple human studies showing positive health benefits, uh, effects improving IQ, which I showed you earlier. Um, these are all published human studies, improving health benefits uh, as immune boosting and as uh, anti-inflammatory is any other omega-3s that are out there or even better. This is an amazing plant. And that's why I brought this plant as opposed to just any other ones. Look, I could have made a lot more money. Flax is dirt cheap. Uh, I, if I was about the money, I'd do that. I, I did ahi flour because it was the best nutritional uh, source of omega-3s on the planet that's ever been discovered. And if there's a better one out there that is discovered, you can be sure I will bring it to market and I will be one of the first to do so too. I was the first to bring ahi flour to market. And I'm very proud of that. It won the Nexty Award for the best new ingredient of the year. This is why I do this. I'm concerned about your health, my health, and everybody else's health out there, which is why I do all the products that I do. I look for the absolute best that nature has to offer then get this information out there. This is huge new scientific data. So I really hope you enjoy this information. I'll continue to do new research that talks about some amazing new plants. We've got a couple more coming. Oh, I'm terribly excited about within the next probably six weeks, we'll be launching two more products. I'm really excited to be introducing those to you because we're going to be first in the market for both of them. Very first company to produce either one of these. I'm super excited because they're best in class in vitamin D3, vegan vitamin D3. And well, I won't say. All right, you're going to have to wait and listen because I'm too excited about that other one. But we've got other more plants and stuff coming that I will be talking about on Facebook Live. And I'm going to do my best to always be on top of the research, find out what the plants are, which plants are doing the best for human health and be the first to bring them to market for you, <laughs> as well as for me and my family. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this Facebook Live. I know it was a lot of science. Hit me up if you have any specific questions. Happy to answer it. This, this is too important. 
uh, not to address. I'm happy to do lectures or come on other podcasts and talk about it too as well. Uh, I can do a much more simplified version of this, but I wanted to do a deep dive so that at least you had the science, the information. I will post the links to all the research studies down below uh, when it's up on the YouTube channel so that you can reference all the studies, click on the links and you can read the studies for yourself. And let me know your feedback. If uh, anything I've said uh, seems out of, out of whack or that you've seen other research that contradicts it, let's get that in the dialogue so that we get the best information that's out there uh, to people so that they can make the best decisions for their health, especially for when our environment and the animals come into play. Thanks for listening. I hope you join me each week, Thursday at 4 p.m., 4 p.m. <laughs> Enjoy, have a happy, healthy day.